हेलो ऑल आई एम अजिंक्य बक्शी टी ए फॉर अकोस्टिक्स एंड नॉइस कंट्रोल एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू दिस मैटलैब ट्यूटोरियल दिस ट्यूटोरियल इज मेंट एज एन इंट्रोडक्शन टू द वंडरफुल प्रोग्रामिंग लैंग्वेज मैटलैब इन दिस ट्यूटोरियल वी विल गो थ्रू सम ऑफ द बेसिक टॉपिक्स इन मैटलैब दैट विल बी सफिशियंट फॉर यू टू सॉल्व द असाइनमेंट्स If you have gone through the course material that has been uploaded you will notice that we are going to deal with different kinds of waves like standing waves propagating waves something called as evanescent waves etc so will it not be better if we can actually see what a wave looks like how it propagates what happens if that propagating wave meets an obstacle so it will be b- better if we plot the wave ourselves as it will not only help in visualization but also it will cement our uh, understanding regarding the physics so why matlab well matlab is a special purpose programming language with that can be used to solve problems involving numerical computations matlab is easy to learn it is versatile and it has an excellent graphics package it makes programming fun and easy so let's enter the fascinating world of matlab so before we actually dive into matlab uh, we will get acquainted with some of its concepts firstly we will see what all those windows are which appear when we open matlab then we will see how to get help from matlab when we are stuck in programming then we will see the building blocks of computation and in matlab what are scalars what are vectors and matrices how to define them and all after that we will start the actual programming using if else statement that is selection then we will see how to use loops then we will also write something called as function files and script files towards the end we will plot many vectors and we will see how we can use those plots to actually animate things so that we can actually see what is happening uh, we will conclude this tutorial with uh, some discussion on good coding practices and debugging so once you open matlab uh, you will see many windows for example here we can see a command window so uh, this is the uh, main window in matlab in the sense that we type all the commands here so let's see x is equal to 4 and enter so what matlab does here is that it creates a variable x and assigns it a value 4 we need not uh, declare x to be an integer variable initially matlab will automatically assume it to be an integer so l- similarly we can define many other variables for example let's define y to be pi and z to be let's say 1.618 and w to be 10 so one thing you observe here is that when we press enter matlab will print the variable and its value suppose uh, if we want to suppress this output so to achieve that we will put a semicolon at the end of the line so for example a is equal to 7 and a semicolon if we press enter now matlab will assign a7 but it has not displayed the output command window can be also used as a cal- calculator so let's say we want to add two numbers uh, we we will add x and y and store the result in c so c is equal to x plus y so this is what we get we will get a- addition of x and y Uh, let's define some other variable q to be 21 suppress the output and we will define a variable answer to be 2 into q so we have multiplied a scalar and stored the value in variable answer so now coming to the workspace the workspace will list and display all the variables that have been created in the command window Uh, so we can see here that we have a variable names and their values suppose we want to see much more details that we can do by uh, by doing a right click on the panel and selecting what we want to see here we can select the size 
and let's say what is the minimum value and maximum value. So, a uh, workspace can also be used to edit uh, the variables. Suppose I want to edit A, currently A has value 7, Since if I want to edit A to let us say 10, so I will do it this way, I will click A, press enter and it will show me a table, so there its value. So, I will select 7, make it 10. and press enter. Uh, so, here we can see that A has been updated to value 10. We can even delete some variables from workspace. Suppose we want to delete Z, we will do this by uh, selecting Z, press delete, MATLAB will prompt for confirmation. If we say ok, MATLAB will delete that variable. We can achieve this result from command window also. The command for that is clear. Uh, suppose we want to delete q, x and y. So, how we do it? Clear space q space x space y. Now, observe the workspace as I hit enter. You can see that the assigned variables have been deleted. Uh, suppose I want to clear the workspace completely. So, in, instead of typing all the variables uh, space x, space y, space a, space answer, we will just write clear all and the workspace will be gone. Suppo uh, or there is one more command to clear the screen that is CLC. If I press enter, the command window is clear. Just take a note that CLC will not delete the variables, CLC will just clear the command window. Now, we will go to command history command history will keep record of all the commands that have been typed in command window. Suppose you want to execute this a equal to 7 once again, we can do this by a double clicking on this command and it will get executed. As you can see in workspace a has been assigned value 7. Now, this current folder will store all the files that have been created in this working directory. Essentially, the current folder is your working directory. You can uh, create new folders here, delete few files if you want. If you want to change the current directory, we can do this by using the drop menu here and selecting the path that we want. Suppose for some reason the path is not listed there, we can always use this browse icon browse for folder, we can click on this and then we can select whatever path we want and uh, the working directory will be changed to that. Now, we will come to the ed editor window, it looks like this. So, the editor window uh, is used to write script files and function files. Uh, for now, we will take a peek at script files and we will save function files for later. So, uh, it may happen that our program contains let us say 10, 15 lines and we have to run the program daily for some times. Uh, and we have seen that we can do that by writing each command one by one in the command window, but it is not feasible, right. So, what we will do, we will write all those exact commands in a script file, save it as a .m file, .m being extension for MATLAB files. Then whenever we want to run the program, we will open that script file and we will just say run and it will run it. So, let us do an example. Suppose we have two points and we have to find the distance between them. So, uh, we will start by clearing the workspace, clear all then we will clear the command window. So, then we will define our uh, variables, let us say x naught is 2, y naught is 3, x 1 is 7 and y 1 is let us say 9. And let us say r is the variable where uh, the distance will be stored. So, formula for distance is square root. In MATLAB, 
so the function sqrt will compute square root so the formula is x1 minus x0 square plus y1 minus y0 square and a semicolon now if you want to display r we will use the function disp disp r so this is our program this is a script file now we will save it let's say we call it distance between points and press enter now we can see observe in current folder we have a file named distance between points so this is our working directory and we store saved a file there so it appears here now if we run this program by this run button run and let's see command window so matlab has calculated the distance to be this now suppose uh, someone says okay change x not to 5 and so uh, we will just change x not to 5 and we will run the program again and the distance has changed so if this has to be done in command window we would have to type everything again and again and again so writing script file essentially simplifies programming before we dive into into matlab let's see how we can get help if we are stuck during programming uh, matlab documentation itself provides a great help so uh, since we have seen the square root function let's see how we can search that in documentation if you go to the main window on the right hand top side you can see search documentation there if we write sqrt matlab will show me the functions and and search suggestions we, we can select what we want we can search the documentation from command window also for that we have to press f1 and there we can follow the same same procedure that we followed here another way to get help without searching documentation is to use the command help so how to we do it is h e l p help space s q r t and when we press enter so here matlab will show the information regarding square root function it will also suggest few other functions it may happen sometimes that we we remember a certain keyword from the function but not the entire function so in that case the help command is not useful so for that we will ask matlab to look for something so let's say we want we just remember the word avg but we don't remember the entire function so we will say matlab look for avg and press enter so matlab will search for this keyword in the documentation and it will print all those functions which contains avg so we can see here that it has found one and it has printed so it may list maybe around 3 or 4 more functions which contain avg and once it has listed we can uh, select what we want so let's clear the screen and move ahead okay we have seen look for online help is also great for matlab you can browse through the blogs of mathworks you can visit forums like matlab central stack exchange there you can find very good help there are also number of books which are written on matlab particularly this getting started with matlab by professor rudra pratap is a very nicely written and a fantastic book it's easy to follow and of course you can use the course forum to get help so now let's enter the basic build building blocks of matlab 
matrices are the at the heart of MATLAB computations. They occupy a very special place here. MATLAB indeed was a design to operate on matrices and if you know MATLAB itself stands for matrix laboratory. So, in different programming language you may have come across the term. So, a two dimensional array with n rows and m columns is called a matrix of size m cross n. Scalar is basically a matrix with one row and one column that is it has size 1 cross 1. So, any number is a scalar for example, 23, 16 any number we will define it assign it value and we will check its size. So, let us say we define z equal to 17. So, if we see workspace z has size 1 cross 1 it is a scalar we can check size by using function size parenthesis z close parenthesis and it will show 1 cross 1. Now, let us come to vectors. Vectors are one dimensional arrays and these are uh, these are matrices where one of the dimension is 1 that is vectors are matrices with only one row or one column. If it has only one row we call it a row vector, if it has only a one column we call it a column vector. So, how do we uh, define a vector? Uh, first let us see using scalars. So, uh, let us say we will first clear the workspace clear all and command window 2 ok. So, let us say we have to create a vector 1 2 3. So, we will say v equal to square bracket. So, uh, observe that uh, we have to indicate to MATLAB start of a vector by a square bracket. This will tell that ok now we, we are defining a vector. So, uh, now let us enter elements let us say 1 space 2 space 3 and we will uh, indicate the end of a vector by a closing square bracket. And if we press enter MATLAB will create a row vector if you can check size in workspace 1 by 3 which has elements 1, 2 and 3. We can also uh, separate these elements with comma let us say uh, w starting with a square bracket 2 comma 3 comma 4. This will again create a row vector with elements 2 3 4. So, if you separate two variables by a comma or a space MATLAB will put a them in the same row. Now, if we want to generate a column vector we can do it this way let us say q is equal to 5 semicolon 6 semicolon 7. So, MATLAB has generated a column vector check size in workspace it is 3 cross 1. So, this semicolon will tell MATLAB to begin a new row. Now, uh, suppose that I have to I have to create a vector of first 15 natural numbers. So, how do we do it? Uh, one way to do it is to type all the 15 natural numbers with space or semicolon. Smart way to do it is using a colon operator. So, what actually is a colon operator? Let us see. Colon operator has syntax you have to specify start element, you have to specify increment how much MATLAB will increase with each turn and you have to indicate where MATLAB should stop. So, let us generate our first 15 natural numbers using colon operator. So, let us say natural numbers is 1 colon increment by 1 colon stop at 15. So, here we can see MATLAB has generated a vector with size 1 cross 15 uh, and uh, it begins at 1 and ends at 15. Observe one thing here unlike unlike the previous case we have not 
enclose this in a square bracket. This is so because colon operator is defined to generate a vector. So, we need not enclose it in square brackets. Also, if we miss the increment, suppose if I miss increments, if I just say 1 colon 15, MATLAB will by default assume it to be 1. See, now uh, let us say we have to judge, we have to create a vector of odd numbers between 1 and 100. So, uh, we will again use colon operator, but in this case the increment will not be 1, it will be 2. So, let us say odd num is equal to 1 increment by 2 and stop at 100. So, MATLAB has printed all the odd numbers between 1 and 99. So, what happens here is that MATLAB will select first number 1, add 2 to it, the addition will be 3. Now, MATLAB will check if 3 is less than or greater than 100. If it is less than, it will continue the operation. This happens until MATLAB reaches 99. So, what happens at 99? MATLAB will add 2 to it, we will get 101. MATLAB will check whether 101 is greater than or less than 100. We, MATLAB sees that it is greater than 100 and it will stop at 99. That is why we get a vector which ends at 99 and not at 100. Uh, we can check the size of uh, this vector, size parenthesis odd num. It is a row vector of size 1 by 50. Also, till now using the colon operator, we have generated all the vectors that are in increasing order. That is, we begin with a small number and we end up at a big, big number. Can we create vectors in the reverse order? Well, yes. Let us do it. Let us say we define a vector which will begin at 7, decrease by 1 and it will end up at 1. So, let us define our vector to be DEC for decrement and let us say 7, begin at 7, increment 1 and end will be 1. Now, what happens if we press enter? MATLAB has written an empty matrix. Why? Again, MATLAB will take first element 7, it will add 1 to it and it will check the end condition. Is 8 greater than or less than 1? Since the condition has failed, MATLAB will stop at initial stage itself and will return us an empty matrix. You can see in workspace the vector which we planned with name DEC, it has value 0, not even 0, it is empty. So, we will rectify our mistake like we have to tell MATLAB increment is not 1, but increment is minus 1. So, we will correct our mistake now. Now, if you want to ex browse through the uh, previous commands in the command window, uh, we can use the up arrow. Like here, I can go to any command which I have typed uh, previously. Uh, since it is just the first command, I will just have to press once and then I will go to increment section, I will put minus 1 and let us say. So, MATLAB has now displayed and defined an array DEC which starts at 7, ends at 1 and decreases by 1 at each step. Sometimes it may happen that we want, um, we want uh, a vector, uh, we know the start point of vector, we know the end point of vector and we also know how many points are there in between these two points, but we do not know by how much we need to I increment to get to that points. So, so in that case we, we can use one more function called as lin space which stands for a linear spacing. So, let us say we want a vector which starts at 1, ends at 10 with 5 points in between them. So, we will uh, do it in this way. Let us say our vector has name w. w is lin space MATLAB will prompt us help, it is ask for first number, it is a 1 comma, second number is 10 and we need 5 points. So, we will write 5, close and enter. 
so you can see that w is a vector with five points suppose we miss that n number suppose we just say lin space 1 comma 10 so what happens in this case matlab will by default assume n to be 100 it has given me a vector of size 1 cross 100 so we have seen this this complete the vectors now let's enter the matrix we have already seen that matrix is a two dimensional array and matlab looks everything as a matrix even a scalar for matlab is a 1 cross 1 matrix and a vector is maybe n cross 1 matrix or 1 cross m matrix so let's see how we will define a matrix firstly again we will start using scalars okay our matrix is a and we have to create a matrix of size let's say 3 by 3 so we'll say 1 2 3 so space will ensure that matlab will put these digits in a same row now if we now we want to tell matlab to begin a new row so we will press a semicolon and we will start our new row it's a 7 6 5 again we will press semicolon to tell matlab okay start a new row it's a 11 comma 12 comma let's say space 13 it doesn't matter if you combine commas and space matlab will still put them in the same row we will close indicate the end of matrix by a closing of a square bracket we press enter and uh, matlab has defined a matrix with these elements and the size is 3 by 3 so uh, we can also uh, define a matrix using two vectors let's say we will first clear the workspace again so let's define our vector v1 to be one we'll use colon operator since we have learned it and let's say v2 to be 6 minus 1 and 4 okay now let's say we want to create a matrix using v1 and v2 so let's call our matrix capital v and let's say the first row is v1 and now we have to tell matlab that v2 should occupy a new row same thing again we will put a semicolon type v2 close the bracket and we have generated a v matrix you can check size always in workspace the size is 2 cross 3 now let's do one more example let's see what matlab does in this case we'll define 1 to be 1 to 4 and let's say x2 is 2 to 5 and x3 is 1 to 3 now if we want to create a matrix using these three vectors let's see x is first row will be x1 let's say next row may be x3 and next row and final row will be x2 so matlab has given us an error what it says that the dimensions of the matrices that are being concatenated are not consistent you can actually see that while x1 and x2 have same number of columns but x3 is only a three column map column matrix you can even see the sizes of x1 x2 and x3 they are not same x1 and x2 are 1 by 4 and 1 by 4 and x3 is 1 by 3 matrix so these things should be kept in mind that if you want to create a matrix using row vectors the number of columns should be same and if we are creating a matrix using a column vector then the number of rows in all those matrices should be same 
So, we can even uh, define matrix using colon operator directly. Let us say our matrix is F and we say 11 colon 13 and next row we say 2 colon 4 and let us see what we get. So, you can even use colon operators to define matrices that we have seen. Yeah, and there are some predefined functions in MATLAB to generate useful useful matrices. So, we will see few of them like ones, zeros, rand and diag. So, what ones does is that it will create a matrix with all elements to be ones. So, let us say we call that matrix O and we will say ones 4. So, MATLAB will generate a matrix 4 by 4 that will all be containing ones. We can even create a vectors using these functions. Let us create a vector of zeros. Let us say we call it z zeros. We will create a row vector. Let us say uh, 1 cross 5 and we press enters and we get a row vector with all zeros in it. The rand command will generate a matrix of random numbers between 0 and 1. In this case, it will generate a 4 by 4 matrix and suppose we want to create a diagonal matrix whose off diagonal terms are 0 and we have to and we know only the diagonal terms. So, the this command will do it. Let us say d is diag, we will have to specify this v as a vector. So, let us say it is 1, 5, 7, 11 and we will close it. So, we here we can see that the uh, diag command has created a 4 by 4 diagonal matrix since we had 4 elements in our vector all the off diagonal terms are 0 and the diagonal terms are the terms which have appeared in the vector. Now that we know how to define matrices and vectors we will see their arithmetic. In that we will see these following operations addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and exponentiation. Let us see addition. So, here we have predefined few matrices as you can see in the workspace. A is a 3 by 3 matrix, B is also a 3 by 3 matrix, C is a 3 by 2 matrix and D is a 3 by 1 vector. Let us add A and B and store the result in A1 a 1 is a plus b. Now, let us add a and c and MATLAB has tossed an error. So, this is so because while performing addition operation MATLAB will add element of first matrix with the corresponding element in the second matrix and due to lack of elements in c a plus c is not possible. Similarly, a plus d is not feasible. Thus, to add two or more matrices, their sizes should be same. Same goes with subtraction. There are two types of matrix multiplications defined in MATLAB. One is the regular matrix multiplication which we learned in linear algebra. Other is called array multiplication. We will come to that in a minute. First, let us deal with the regular matrix multiplication. So, for two matrices getting multiplied in this way, their inner dimensions should be same. What I mean by that is, let us say we have two matrices x of size n cross m and y of size p cross q and we have to evaluate x star y. Now, x star y will yield result if and only if m is equal to p that is number of columns of the first matrix 
should be equal to the number of rows of the second matrix. So, if that is the case then we say that x and y are compatible, but this does not mean that y and x will be compatible also. Let us see an example, here we will multiply matrix A star C. We know that A is a 3 by 3 matrix and C is a 3 by 2 matrix. Therefore, their inner dimensions match and A star C should yield result, which it does. Now, what happens if I try C star A? Since the dimensions are not same, we expect MATLAB to give us an error and MATLAB does not disappoint. Now, let us replace star with a dot star and we will get array multiplication. Let us do an example and see what it gives. M2 will be A dot star B. A dot star B will result into this. So, A is this matrix and B is this matrix. Observe that each element in the new matrix M2 is product of corresponding elements of matrices A and B. For example, the first element 56 in M2 is the product of 8 and 7, which are first elements in matrix A and B respectively. Thus, with dot star MATLAB is doing an element wise multiplication. Therefore, like addition in this case too, their sizes should be same. This dot will tell MATLAB to perform array operations. To summarize, for regular matrix multiplication, two matrices should be compatible, that is their inner dimensions should be same and for array multiplications, their sizes should be same. Now, let us come to division. First, let us see array division. So, along with the regular slash operator, MATLAB has one more operator for a division, which is a backslash. Let us see what is the a difference among these two. So, a dot slash b, which we also call a over b, will be evaluated as a i j over b i j, that is element in matrix A over the corresponding elements in matrix B and A dot backslash B will be evaluated as B i j over A i j, that is elements in matrix B over the corresponding elements in matrix A. So, are these two matrices inverses of each other? Let us see. So, D 1 will store A dot slash B and D 2 will store A dot backslash B. Now, if D 1 and D 2 are inverses of each other, the product D 1 star D 2 should yield an identity matrix, but it does not. So, it should be kept in mind that uh, these operations A dot slash B and A dot backslash B will result in matrices whose elements are reciprocals of each other but the matrices themselves are not inverses of each other. Many a times we have to solve equations in matrix form as A x equal to B, where A is a known matrix, B is a known vector and x is an unknown vector which we have to evaluate. So, we can use the backslash operator to find x. Here let us say x is a backslash d, d is our vector here. We can also use the inverse function 
inverse of a star d. Now, what happens if we do a backslash c? Does MATLAB evaluate this or will it give us an error? So, let us see what actually MATLAB has done here is with a backslash c MATLAB is calculating the first column of the resultant matrix as a backslash the first column of c and the second column is a backslash second column of c. So, this backslash operator we can say it is similar to the multiplication in the sense that the sizes of the two matrices involved should be compatible. Now, let us come to exponentiation. First, we will see array operation. So, when we write a dot raise to b, you know that the operation will yield result if sizes of a and b are same since it is an array operation and that each element in the base matrix a will be raised to the corresponding element in the index matrix b. So, let us see a is this and b is this. So, 81 is 9th squared and 8 is 2 cubed. Now, what happens if the exponent is a scalar? So, let us try a dot square and each element in a has been squared. Since it is just squaring elements of the base matrix, we can even work with a non square matrix or a rectangular matrix like C. So, C dot square should also yield result and it does. Again, what happens if we do 2 dot raise to C? What we expect here is and this is matrix C. So, 2 has been raised to each element in the matrix C. So, 2 squared is 4, 2 raised to 6 is 64 and so on. Thus, if we are doing array exponentiation and if both the operands are matrices, their sizes should be same, but if one of the operands is a scalar, the size of the other matrix does not matter. Now, what will this be evaluated as? So, c square is basically c star c and we know that for c star c to yield result, the inner dimensions should be same, but c is a 3 by 2 matrix, it is not compatible and c star c will give me an error. In what cases this operation will give me a solution? a matrix x will be compatible to itself if and only if it is a square matrix. So, we expect that c square should give me an error which it does, but a square will give me solution as expected. So, to summarize the entire exponentiation operation we see that if we are using array operation and the two operands are matrices, their sizes should be same. If one of the operand is a scalar, the size of the other matrix does not matter and if we are doing regular exponentiation with scalar, the base matrix should be a square matrix.
now that we are adept in arithmetic let's see how we can uh, manipulate matrices how we can extract elements from them how we can add new elements how we can replace the existing ones etc so let us first see how the rows and columns are numbered so let's say we have a matrix x which contains n rows and m columns so the row numbering will start from top to bottom with 1 2 up to n and column numbering will start from left to right with 1 2 up to m let's say we have to extract an element which occupies nth row and mth column so uh, to do that we tell matlab extract element in x which is in row n and column m so the row number always go first and followed by the column number so here we have matrix m which is a 7 cross 7 matrix and suppose we have to extract element which lies in 7th row and 3rd column that is we have to extract this element so how we tell matlab is m parenthesis 7th row and 3rd column close parenthesis and enter and matlab has extracted that particular scalar or element now suppose we have to extract a sub matrix which is an intersection of columns 2 3 5 7 and rows 1 3 5 and 7 so how do we do it is this way the rows are 1 3 5 7 and we can be smart this this time and we will use colon operator up to 7 and columns will be 2 3 5 and 7 so m1 will contain intersection of these columns and these rows now suppose i want to extract entire fourth row of m1 one way to do it is row number 4 1 2 4 another way of doing it is using just a colon so it will be m1 of fourth row and all columns if you place this colon symbol in the place of columns matlab will assume that we want all the columns and if you place this colon symbol in the rows place matlab will assume we want all the rows now suppose i want to extract column number 3 of m1 matrix so how to do this is instead of placing it in the column space we will say all rows of third column and matlab will give me all rows of third column this so it's easy to see what this operation will do i say all rows and all columns of matrix m which is the matrix m itself there is a handy keyword called end and we can use it quite effectively it may happen in programming that we end up with a huge matrix whose size we don't know and for some purpose we have to extract its last two columns uh, so how do we access the last two columns if we don't know the size of the matrix uh, so in such situations end comes into play 
सपोज आई राइट वी थ्री एंड वॉट दिस विल गिव मी इज इट विल गिव मी द लास्ट एलिमेंट इन वेक्टर वी थ्री विच इज टू सो लेट सी वॉट मैट लैब गिव्स एंड इट गिव्स टू दिस एंड विल टेल मैट लैब टू गिव मी द लास्ट एलिमेंट इन केस ऑफ वैक्टर वी कैन ऑल्सो यूज दिस एंड की वर्ड विथ अरिथमेटिक ऑपरेशन सच एज एडिशन सब्ट्रैक्शन एक्सेट्रा Now we will try to extract last two columns of M using the keyword end. So M two will be M. We want all rows end minus one comma end and MATLAB will. extract the last two columns of matrix m we can even replace elements in the matrix suppose we want to replace this 29 with 23 in matrix m2 so we tell matlab to replace entry in the second row and second column by 23 and as you can see matlab has updated entry 2 comma 2 now suppose i have to replace a sub matrix which is 13 14 33 3 and 3 4 so again it's actually a straight forward thing you will tell matlab to replace rows 1 3 and columns 3 4 by let's say 11 27 32 and 3 and as you can see here intersections of row 1 and 3 and columns 3 and 4 has been replaced by 11 27 43 and 3 now if we want to delete let's say first column of m1 matrix that we do by setting all rows of first column in matrix m1 to an empty square bracket so as you can see here the first column has been deleted so here are a few commonly used functions inverse will give me inverse of the matrix determinant will give me the determinant transpose will give me the transpose let's illustrate these with examples so inverse of a will give me a inverse we can ve verify this by doing a star a inverse which is an identity matrix now determinant of a will calculate the determinant which is minus 360 so a matrix is this and transpose a will transpose the matrix similarly a prime will also transpose the matrix this i command will calculate eigen vectors and the vectors will be stored as column matrix in the variable vector 
and the values will store the eigen values as a diagonal matrix so for a details regarding eig function look in matlab help so this concludes our tutorial one we have gotten acquainted with matlab and its environment we know where to look for help in case we get stuck we know how to define and manipulate um, scalars vectors and matrices in the next tutorial we will start actual programming we will learn new and interesting topics and we will see many examples see you in the next tutorial